Mindful Fam, welcome to my channel. Thank you for the subscribers. Welcome to any new viewers. It's so nice to have you here and appreciate your time that you're willing to share. Today we have such a special guest with us. This is my oldest sister, Emily. She has her own baking business called Baking with Chef Emily, and I thought that it'd be super awesome to combine forces and do Be Mindful with Sarah plus Baking with Chef Emily to do a nice plant-based fall themed dessert for everyone. And Emily's gonna tell you what we came up with. Ooh, so we decided to go with a gluten-free pumpkin streusel cake, but I didn't have any pumpkin on hand, so we decided to replace the pumpkin with an acorn squash, which I roasted up um, and pureed. Excellent. And I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions now that we're chatting about your baking business and for the subscribers to see and the viewers. Um, what got you into baking and what about baking makes you want to continue to keep it in your life? Um, well, I guess I started baking with mom um, when we were kids growing up. Uh, loved her chocolate chip cookie dough. Still a family favorite. Um, and so that really inspired me. My love for sweets really inspired me to start baking. Um, and then what keeps me baking is the love for the people I have in my life because I love to share desserts. I think cooking for people is an act of love. Yeah. So um, that's what we're doing here today. Oh, that's sweet. Do you have anything particularly that you like to bake? I know that I put some guidelines on you to do a, a nice plant-based dish, but if the, if the guidelines weren't out there, what would be your top thing? Ooh, um, I guess there's like two different categories of baking. The first category is I'm just baking for myself and, you know, had a rough week and I need a little sugary pick-me-up and that will sure. always be brownies. I always have supplies for brownies in the house and they're customizable, you know, you can add in peanut butter or that shredded coconut or whatever you have on hand. Um, and then if I am baking for events or for other people, I like to challenge myself. So trying new techniques, trying new ingredients. Um, so yeah, I've been lately playing with um, making various kinds of like macarons and cool. different cookies. So. Excellent, cool. Do you mind if we show the viewers some of your baking concoctions now? Oh sure, please. So we'll put those up on the screen so you can see all the lovely things that she has the passion and talent to make, which are so awesome. And I thank you for always sharing these oh. with me. Anytime. So now we're going to make the spiced uh, squash bread. Essentially, yeah. I mean, the spiced <laughs> squash, acorn squash bread. Ooh, that's our flax egg. We're making a flax egg. We're not using a real egg, and so we ground some flax seeds and put one tablespoon of flax seed in with some water, and we're setting it aside for about 15 minutes, so that will be the binding agent for our bread. Um, and so we're just gonna jump into it now. We're gonna um, show you guys the tutorial of how to make this dish. We hope that you enjoy it. Um, it's gluten-free, vegan, and... Uh, I think that's it. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> all, all the diets, it's all that. It's all good, it's all delicious, and we hope you enjoy it. I think so, which, or also where should I stand? Uh, right here. Is there enough room? Yeah. Well, why don't we switch spots, and then I'll tell you what to do. And you can do the <laughs> wet, and then I'll do okay, the okay. Off. Okay. You can do the dry, and then I'll do the wet. In order to make this recipe gluten-free, we are not using um, traditional wheat flour. So we have here two cups of oat flour. You can purchase that in the grocery store, but we tried to make everything ourselves for this recipe, so it took a little bit longer. Um, we just used steel-cut oats and um, ground them in a food processor and then sifted them. Broth under control, but the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, a monitoring group, said the town has not yet been fully captured and fighting there continues. Kurdish forces also denied the town was captured. Turkey says it wants to take control of the area from Syrian Kurdish forces. So we have two cups of the oat flour. So this will go, this is our dry ball. Mm -hmm. What is a dry ball, what is a wet ball? Um, yeah, they're just bowls that you usually mix the dry and the wet ingredients separately before you combine them yeah. as a way of preventing clump, like clumping. clumping. Um, and then to that we'll add half a cup of almond flour. And then the last thing that we'll add are some spices. We've got um, cinnamon, nutmeg, and clove. Smells delicious. And then also some baking powder, baking soda, rising agents, and salt. Mm. So fall, so fall. Great, and Sarah, if you wanna take the whisk and whisk this up for us. Love it. I love the colors. It also makes me think of all the work that went into drying. Yes. <laughs> Grinding the flour. 
Ooh, we highly amazing. recommend purchasing your oat flour. Yes, but if you're on a budget, this is a great way to do it. And connect. Um, and bond. Connect. Have lots of bonding time. Um, so it looks great. Thank you, Sarah. Um, now the next thing that we're going to need to do is to combine the wet ingredients. So we'll have another separate bowl for that. Um, and I'll have Sarah start off by adding our puree. The recipe called for pumpkin puree, but as I mentioned, we uh, decided to use acorn squash. Any squash will do. I um, sliced this one open and I roasted it for an hour at 350. And then of course let it cool down uh, before uh, trying to take it out of its shell. If the squash was warm, would that affect the dish? No, I think it would just affect your hands. Like it would make it really <laughs> uncomfortable yeah. um, to take it out. So I, uh, I roasted it up last night. Perfect. You have to temper eggs if you're um, putting them in a hot dish. It's also important to use room temperature, like dairy and, um, and eggs, if you're cooking in a non-vegan way, but that's not our issue today. Right. Um, excellent. Okay, so then the next step, we every baked good has a fat. So we've got some coconut oil in here. And to that, I will ask Sarah to add a quarter cup of maple syrup. Do you know what the role of the fat is? Um, it makes it delicious and moist. <laughs> Qu half a That's cup? perfect. Okay. Great. Great. Um, and this is grade A maple syrup, not um, the kind that you would find in a plastic container in the pancake and uh, cereal aisle. It tastes really tasty. Um, and then here, also in a maple syrup container, um, which is just being reused, is some homemade vanilla extract. Um, that I am proud to share today. That's the oven going off, preheated to 350. And this, is, we need about a teaspoon, but about eyeball it. Uh, about an eyeball, yeah. sort of. <laughs> How did you make this? Um, I just put in vanilla beans, bulk vanilla beans, with, I think this, I think I used white rum, but you can use a variety of different alcohols for it. How long does it take to create an alcohol? Um, I actually have been making this since July 2018. Wow. Um, and I didn't start to use it till the spring, so it had been um, in here steeping, if you will, for over a year. Yeah. I feel honored to use it. Yes, please. Put it right yep. in here. Go ahead and okay. put it right in. And then our all-important flax egg. Excellent, and if you want to um, whisk it. Yeah, let's whisk it. I've got another whisk for you. Two whisks. Two whisks. That's what you get when you go to a baker's place. Always, and that gives us just half the number of whisks to have in use. I knew we had to film here because I don't have any of this stuff at my place. You gotta be ready for social baking, so. Do you host any parties or do events? Yeah, um, I've done some kids' birthday parties, um, and I do private baking lessons with adults and with children and adults. I really like to do parent-child baking um, adventures. It's really fun. That's cool. Yeah. So in the Philadelphia area, come check me out. Bacon with Chef Emily. Great. Okay, so now we're going to combine the wet and the dry ingredients. Dry into wet. Um, always dry into wet. Yum. And if you are making something with wheat flour, you want to make sure that you with you blend it until combined um, and not any further. Otherwise, that can develop some of of the wheat gluten and then it will the texture will be off. You don't want the oats? But that's not a concern here because we're oh. doing gluten free. So we can mix it as much as, as we much want. As much as your heart's content. Yeah. Okay. I'm with it. Mm. It's looking good. Okay. And then once Sarah has mixed that, uh, we'll be putting it into um, a greased pan. And because we're keeping this vegan, we used vegetable shortening to grease the pan. It'll be much easier to get the um, cake out. Could you grease it with something like oil? Like yeah, coconut oil? for sure, yes. Is I there just happen to have an industrial sized tub of um, <laughs> vegetable oil on hand. See, this is the first time we're making this yeah. recipe. Yeah. And hopefully it turns out. So yeah, into the oven it goes at okay. 350. Cake is in the oven, and we're just gonna whip together the streusel topping and then top it and let it bake for 30 to 40 minutes. So in here we've got some oat flour that wasn't as finely ground, and we have some uh, almond. Just because it was hard to it was hard to get hard through to the sifter. It. We thought we would repurpose it. Waste not, want not. Yes. Got some almond flour, some brown sugar, lots of cinnamon, 
Um, and we're gonna add in this melted coconut oil to kind of make these streusel crumbles. Mm. And shout out to mom. The spatula is from her house. Oh, love it. Yeah. So this will just combine. It's kind of liquidy, but still kind of dry, perfect. The um, clumpable, clumpable, yes. Or on top of the cake. And we did check that the cake we put in the oven when we looked back at the recipe, it said it should be very dry, yes, and thick, and yes, and not to add additional liquid to it. Yes, so we had the right texture there. It was just a little extra chunky because we handmade our flowers and things. Correct. That's but great. it did say to put the streusel in first, so you know, no harm, no foul. A minute in the oven isn't going to affect anything. So I'm going to take yes. the cake out. <gasps> And Sarah, would you like to help me crumble this on top? Yes. Roll up the sleeves. Literally rolling up the sleeves. Important. Yes. So we'll just like get them. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Talk about earth tones. This is right. gorgeous. Very autumnal. Like art. That's also another cool thing about baking and cooking that you can design it how you want, like the yeah. creative element. It is edible art. Yes. It can be functional but also flavorful, creative, and yeah. <laughs> Functional and flavorful. Okay, now are we looking for like full coverage? I think, you know, that's fine. It doesn't have to be a smooth layer. You know, rinse off some of the extra. Okay, I'm gonna for my hands so I can get back into this excellent kitty cat mm -hmm. oven mitt. So the cake is out of the oven. Emily and I picked up some vegan ice cream with cookie dough. And vanilla bean. Vanilla bean and a fudge swirl. So we've placed the ice cream on the plate and now we're gonna do a first impression. It has a good texture. It is very crumbly. It's crumbly but still holds together. Cheers. Mmm. That crumble on top. Mm hmm It's very festive. Yeah. I feel like it's the holidays. Very rich in the seasoning with the cinnamon. Yeah. And uh, what else went in there? The allspice? Uh, it was cinnamon cloves and nutmeg. Cinnamon cloves and nutmeg. Love yeah. it. It's really good. Yeah. It's success. Bam. <gasps> Yay. Mm. So first yeah. of all, I wanted to say thank you very much for making the time, of course, to bake with me and spend time with me. Um, and so we wanted to talk about some tips that we wanted to share with the viewers because there are some things about baking that you just need to be mindful of mm -hmm. to ensure that you're having a good baked dish. So do you have a couple of tips that you can share with our viewers? Yes, so these are tips that are applicable for many recipes, not just the one that we use today. First tip, get yourself a sifter. You should always be sifting your dry ingredients. Um, not just when you're making your own flour, but it helps if you sift um, any dry ingredient you're using so that you don't have clumping. No and clumping. It makes for a, a lighter, um, less clumpy baked good. Less clumpy. Um, so that's tip number one. Um, I got my sifters from the dollar store. Uh, you can get them from almost anywhere, but highly, highly recommend. Um, second tip, whenever you're baking cake, cookies, or um, anything that kind of has a large footprint in the oven, you'll want to rotate it at the halfway mark so that you have an even bake. It's not all ovens heat evenly. Um, and so in order to work around that, it makes sense to flip. So I always set my timer for halfway through, I flip it and that's a good way to kind of like get some eyes on the bake and see how it's turning out as nice. well. Nice. Is there any danger to opening the oven when there's bake inside? Um, some baked goods, yes, but the one that we're working on, no. Okay. Um, but if you're making like a souffle or something, something that could be responsive to temperature differences, then don't do that. But for cakes and cookies, you're gonna be okay. Cool. Third and final tip is that don't be afraid to substitute if you don't have something on hand. Um, you know, we, instead of using coconut sugar in the streusel topping, we just use brown sugar. Um, sometimes recipes can call for fancier ingredients that are expensive to acquire. Just use what you have at home, and if you have a question about the substitution, go ahead and um, just check online and see if people have suggestions. Yeah, there's lots of great things on Google. And sometimes people can be overwhelmed to cook or bake because they see all the ingredients that maybe they don't have, they don't know, they mm -hmm. need to buy, but you really can substitute with what you have. A recipe, maybe not so much for baking, mm -hmm. but for cooking, a recipe is somebody's preference of like, 
how, how much of the seasoning to put in, how much of this and that. Baking is a little more specific, but as far as like those ingredients, the recipe that you find is something that somebody thinks it should be. Mm -hmm. It's not like the one and only. Yeah. So make it work yeah. for you. Yeah, go ahead and substitute. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got our three tips. Um, anything else you'd like to share with, with the viewers? Ooh, um, I would say that baking is so much more fun when you have somebody to do it with. Um, so thanks for baking with me, Sarah. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Well, thank you guys for watching this video with Baking with Chef Emily. And thank you for supporting our loving relationship. And hopefully you guys can share some time with your family and do something you like together. Or even try to bake. Try a new bake good. Try this bake good. Do something fall themed so you really get in the vibe of the season. And yeah, thank you guys very much. I feel like I want to do something where it's like we're tag team. Like, don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay. If you want to use a prop, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next week on Be Mindful with Sarah.